The galaxy is burning. Brother fights brother. And treason splits the Imperium of Man. This is the Age of Darkness. Whether you're a warrior of the Legiones Astartes, an adept of the Mechanicum, or just a mere mortal in a universe of madness, you'll find a place here. Welcome to the Remembrancer's Retreat, coming to you from within the depths of the Vengeful Spirit. And it is good to be back. My name is Jesse. I'm here with today with Austin, and this is the Remembrancer's Retreat, a Warhammer 30K Horus Heresy and Specialist Games podcast. What's going on, Austin? Oh, man, I I will say that I got my first 30K game of 2020 in uh, this weekend. Really? That's right. You and uh, Robbie, right? It was amazing. Yeah, Robbie came over. Uh, we had a lovely socially distanced game of Laz Action, which was fantastic. Oh, it was a uh, militia on militia? Uh, he had his solar oxys. Oh, okay. And I gave my Beastmen militia... <laughs> a uh, a first baptism of fire, which is great, because I painted them. Uh, I built and painted that entire army in like the early weeks of the Rona. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of when everybody was first shutting down, working week to week or week on week off. Right, right. Uh, back when that was something that people enjoyed doing. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> right, wow, how novel. I'm going to get two weeks off this month and still get paid for it. How great. Where he went fucking stir crazy. Mm. Um, it was a lot of fun. We played a, a breakthrough mission. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, there was one objective uh, that after we deployed our armies, uh, I deployed on his table edge. And any of my scoring units that were wholly within 12 at the end of the game scored two points. Mm -hmm. uh, and anything further than 24 inches away from his board edge scored him a point uh, of my army. So it was uh, all it about was wild. getting up in there. And that's. Yeah. I, I brought a heavily mechanized militia army for the first time. Cause I got these, uh, lovely little conversions for a chimera to make it sort of unturreted and mm -hmm. open topped, mm -hmm. uh, which I was running as Aurochs proxies and just had like 40 grenadiers and four of those. And then a horde of 40 levy. And, oh, damn, <laughs> I just realized that whole game, <laughs> every model in my army was T4. Oh, not T3. Ab, uh, yeah, Ab Human Helots. <laughs> Ab Human Helots in Feral Wars. It's been a while, man. It'll yeah, get you. Definitely. So uh, uh, but with that, this, did, did you end up winning or that, losing? <laughs> I, I lost. Okay. <laughs> in, case, in case anybody was wondering after that revelation. <laughs> Um, I lost. We didn't pay a whole lot of attention to the rules. We were just excited to roll dice. Yeah, to see each other so, face to face for more than passing right? glances. Right. Um. So like, I was confident in getting my troop, my like strike force of guys that were kind of because I I deployed the objective to one side. Mm -hmm. So the mechanized infantry I had over there. I was like, all right, they'll take that objective and like the secondary is slay the warlord and like, fuck, this will be, I just want to shoot people. <laughs> uh, totally ignored like what he was getting points for <laughs> and gave him like, well, two of my transports uh, immobilized themselves more than 24 inches away from his board edge. So as that was never going to work no. as is tradition. Um, and just like, my, my recon squad was just hanging out, you know, at the 30 inch mark all game. Cause I didn't realize I should move them any closer. <laughs> um, but I did have a glorious, uh, bayonet charge of his position. He had, uh, 20 solar oxys with, um, their force commander equivalent, whose name I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Um, uh I have no clue off the top of my head, <laughs> but like behind an Aegis line. Uh, and I just like charged them with 40 levy, uh, with a discipline master, a medic and my force commander. And that went pretty well. 
until I realized that the... Well, I forgot the Solar Oxy Force Commanders are meant to kill things in combat. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So thing. I was like, fuck yeah, I'll take your challenge. I got My Force Commander's got a Charnable Saber and a 3-up Invul Save. I ain't got a shit. <laughs> He's only well, toughness 3, but you know. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> We're weapon skill 5. Come at me. <laughs> um, but I forgot that they can have that instant death blade. And... Uh, Oops. Yeah, just didn't go well. Like he was just like instantly ass- assassinated. Come at me. Oh, no. And it wound up being like his force commander surrounded by like six or eight surviving levy uh, when his squad of flamethrower guys decamped from their <laughs> Dracosin to, to finish it off. But it was a ton of fun, man. I, it sounds like it. Like I, I didn't realize how much I missed 30K until I started playing 30K. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, I need to start breaking some stuff out, especially now, after five weeks. It's been five weeks. The Dark Angels now have rules, guys, in case you haven't heard. Yes, if you get your news from nowhere but us, one, thank you, and two, foolish. (laughs) Yeah, I was uh, pleased to get my book nine in the mail on a Tuesday, uh, two days after the start of my busy season at work. So I'd been working nothing but 612s. For the past five weeks and it's been mm. it's been it's been nice mm. so i've yeah i've gone through the rules but i barely have a gone through the fluff yet i've been reading pages of it at a time it's been really good i've just been reading so <laughs> 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 but it's been good i've been looking at some stuff and kind of tweaking some things around and i found some stuff that i think is pretty fun i know uh, some people are a little eh about the rules Overall, I think the rules are pretty good. As a summary, I think the rules are a lot of fun, pretty thematic. Uh, you pay a lot of points for certain things that don't seem like they should cost that much. However, we'll get into that later. What would you like to get into first? Um, actually, let's uh, go ahead and write into the army list for Legionus Astartes Dark Angels. I'm not going to read that all over because at this point, if you've been listening to this for a while... You probably know what space marines are. It's true. And if you've been listening to us for a while, uh, you know that Jesse can fanboy over his Legion just as well as any of the rest of us. I've been playing them for six years, guys. I am not a bandwagoner. (laughs) It's true. (laughs) It's true. He's had them for quite some time. Back when I was still using Stubborn as my Legionus Astartes rule. It's true. He (laughs) uh, He never jumped ship for another Legion. Because uh, even in those troubled times, because my first le- my first uh, space marine army was Dark Angels, and my I've been too scared to commit to anything else. <laughs> well, I can I can feel that in my soul, having played <laughs> Space Wolf since fourth edition. There you go. So yeah, uh, the like, Dark you know, Angel rules, the overall universal rules for Dark Angels. Uh, they have Legionus Astartes, of course, uh, Mastery of the Blade. When fighting in an assault with one of the following weapons, combat blade, chainsword, heavy chainsword, power sword, tyrannic great sword, calibanite war blade, charnable saber, calibanite charge blade, and paragon blades modeled as swords. And when fighting a model with an equal weapon skill, a model with this special rule hits on a three plus. So not much has changed. They've kind of laid out the uh, definition of swords a little bit more, included some uh, mm-hmm. actual war gear specific. And uh, it's still the same. If you got a similar weapon still, still a weapon skill, you hit on a three plus. Still real rude. It's pretty good. Um, not going to lie. Some legions do it better when they get just like a flat plus one to hit or to wound. Yeah, but eh, fuck them. Yeah, it's still good. <laughs> we have. It's s- not as sty- It's not as elegant. That's true. He's getting a bonus for a sword. Yeah, I like it. Uh, the next rule we got is uh, Scions of the Hexagrammaton. Eligible models with the Legionus Astartes Dark Angel rules may select additional options from both the Scions of the Hexagrammaton or Scions of the Hecastonica sections, which we'll get to here in a little bit. But basically, they're little uh, fluff rules. Well, more than fluff, but they're little, little rules that you can add to your special characters and regular characters for a little bit of flavor. 
And finally, we have Invalet and Alone. Models with the Legionis Astarte special rule may never benefit from the leadership characteristic or any leadership-related bonus or special rule from any model which does not have the Legionis Astarte's Dark Angels or Sire of the Dark Angels special rule. Which, that is a solid debuff. It really is. Like, technically it's a debuff. Mm-hmm. But not really. Like, how often does that really happen? I wouldn't think and too often. from a fluff perspective, I like it a lot. Yeah. Uh, we no longer have Covenant of Death. Are you sure, Jesse? Yes, I've looked at it several times. Covenant of Death is gone, and I am so happy. And what was that for those of our listeners who weren't fortunate enough to play against a Dark Angels player before this book? Uh, I don't have the book in front of me, but I can tell you exactly what it means. If you have fewer units on the table than your opponent at the end of the game, they get D3 victory points extra. I lost Uh, more than half the games I lost were due to that stupid rule. And I've had the jaws of victory, or I've had the victory snapped out. Jaws of victory snapped out. I got victory. I lost to that rule too, straight up. (laughs) So Jesse, I've, I've played Jesse's uh, Dark Angels four times uh, prior to this book coming out. Mm-hmm. I have... You counted? I, I did count. Okay. Because it was funny because of <laughs> what I'm about to say. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have never lost to Jesse's Dark Angels. I have also never been ahead on victory <laughs> points before the end of the That's game. That's true. <laughs> Every game... So two games... I was down by a couple, uh, had more units on the table because I play, you know, I play militia. There's a billion units. You can kill me at two to (laughs) one and I'm still going to have more units on the table at the end of the game than my opponent. Um, and my wolves likewise, like I got a ton of units in the wolf army and your demons, uh, demons, likewise, a ton of models, ton of units. Um, and twice we played and I was down uh and brought it up to a tie like and literally like we'd shaken hands on it you know yep. well done jesse you've defeated me and then jesse goes ah oh, fuck i forgot the <laughs> rolls a d a d3 and goes well we tied <laughs> uh once we were actually tied mm-hmm. and oh. again more scoring units yep so. jesse after shaking hands rolls the dice and informs me that i have in fact won the game <laughs> And then, oh, at that point, uh, it's a D3, so you win automatically, but we'll see how bad you win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, once I was down by two victory points at the end of the game, <laughs> and this time I remembered because I was down by two. <laughs> and sure enough, uh, Jesse gave me graciously three victory points and the win. That was the demons, I think, wasn't it? It, it was, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, I look forward to uh, your justly earned victories. If the past is anything to go I'm off of. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and I'm extremely glad that that rule is gone because like I mentioned before, uh, units are very pricey in this army. So you're going to have fewer units. It the, the Dark Angels are effectively an elite army for most situations oh yeah you'd roll out with like six units and i'd have like 11 or something (laughs) just like oh and i just okay i guess fine i'll take those extra d3 victory points especially because you know i love to run my iron wing yeah and it didn't matter right Mm -hmm. like even you just had to accept that you were giving your opponent d3 victory points Mm -hmm. every game unless you were playing against like a pride of the legion list or something you know A well, a well retired rule. Yeah, yeah. Off to greener pastures. So yeah, those are the uh, gen, uh, universal rules, and now we're going to go into specific war gear. Yeah, let's get into it. The weapons of old knight. As the first legion, the dark angels were originally outfitted with a panoply of arms drawn not from the fruit of the emperor's pact with Mars, but instead from the arsenal of the unification wars of ancient Terra. Relic weapons and technologies of great potency, but often difficult to replicate and even treacherous, many of which would later be forbidden. Long after the other legions were formed and the Great Crusade ratified and standardized much of the Legion of Astartes' war gear so that it could be replicated on forge worlds across the Imperium, the Dark Angels retained many of these ancient and potent relics, as well as the techno-arcana that resided within them. 
Jesus Christ, that's like a four line sentence. <laughs> anyway, uh, these they continued to employ solely within the Legion. Uh, weapons whose secrets were never fully yielded to Mars or their space marine brethren by the Emperor's own command. We got special permission from Daddy. Reeks of heresy. <laughs> that's the exact opposite of reeking of heresy, but that's fine. Uh, so yeah, the rules go, uh, any character with the Legionis Astartes Dark Angels special rule of access to a power sword as part of their war gear option may instead take a Calibanite Warblade for 10 points instead or exchange a power sword that is part of their basic equipment for a Calibanite Warblade for free. Any model with the Legionis Astartes special rule of access to a plasma gun or twin-linked plasma gun as part of their war gear options may instead take a plasma repeater for 20 points or a plasma burner for 15 points. Oh, I didn't realize you can take plasma burners like that now. Very cool. And, the, and so let me let me stop you there. For, well, actually, no, finish. Okay. Finish up, finish up. In the case of units with multiple plasma guns, all such weapons in the same unit must be upgraded to the same weapon if either option is chosen. Stop and look at the plasma burner. Jesus wept. Yes, the plasma burner... Uh, is a new uh, war gear item for book nine. It was not in book six. It is 12 inch range, strength four, AP two, assault D three plus one, roll each time the weapon is fired and the entire unit takes that roll, it ignores cover, and has plasma flame. Plasma flame allows you to re roll any failed hit rolls when making an Overwatch attack. That's so nasty. That's a very, very potent weapon there. I mean, only strength four, so like it it'll suffer a little bit against the bigger things out there. Jesus. It doesn't Christ. get hot. It's like it does not get hot. It's assault D3, 12 inch range. You basically have D3 plus one. D3 plus one, thank you. 12 inch range, ignores cover. It's effectively just a super powered bolt pistol of a you know crazy proportion. And then the plasma repeater, also a very solid option. Uh, 12 inch range, strength six, AP two. Uh, Salvo two, three, twin linked, gets hot. So gets hot, but not really because you're twin linked. Like, what are the odds? Yeah. Um, um, really good for like bikes. I see bikes as a solid option to take that. Zone mortalis. You know, a lot of people see this uh, weapon as kind of subpar, but honestly, I. I know that gets hot with a two or three dice is a little, you know, eh. But they're twin linked, man. What are they, like, that's not huge in my book. The 12 inch range sucks. Like, you know, you, you want at least 24 if you're trying to really go hard. Mm -hmm. But there are so many ways to get within 12 inches of a unit without like really exposing yourself mm -hmm. that I don't see that as a huge downside. Yeah. And you just can't beat, you know, Three shots at strength six AP two for each for anybody with a plasma gun. How much? So honestly, with the twin link, you're probably only going to see these things on bikes. Probably because I can't think. But I would love to see them in, on some Terminators for Zone Mortalis, man. Can, but that, Terminators that can't really, take plasma guns, though, can they? I don't believe so. Can they not? They only can take a plasma blasters. Boo! Yeah, yeah. Get a support squad. There you go. Zone Mortalis plasma support squad. I mean, it'd be hella expensive, but... <laughs> but at that point, would you rather take the plasma burner, though? I'd, I'd break my rule <laughs> on support squads uh -huh. and take five of each. Oh. Because those plasma burners... Well, you can, only, you can only equip completely of one of each. Yes. So you're taking two, uh, yeah, two, two five-man squads? Upgraded to the same weapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah it'd be two five-man squads. Then. Gotcha. Because they, they are hilarious hellaciously expensive. Mm -hmm. oh, well, I guess not, because it's access to a plasma gun. So you have to buy the plasma gun first. You buy this instead of. Right, right. It's not on stacked on top of a plasma gun. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's real good. It's real good, Jesse. I might have to make some uh, Calibanite black shields. <laughs> Just to get up in there just to get all up in there. Cause I love me some plasma weapons. Oh man. yeah. They're my favorite guns in the game. They're good. They're really good. You can't say no to the AP too. Mm -mm. Cause that's, that's just brutal. No, you cannot. Moving on. Uh, any Praetor, Centurion or console 
With the Legionis Astartes Dark Angel special rule, with access to a Power Fist as part of their war gear, may take instead a Tyrannic Greatsword for 15 points. And why not? Yeah, and the Tyrannic Greatsword did not change, guys. Strength plus two, AP three, melee, two-handed, instant death. And all your sergeants hitting on threes against other sergeants. Yeah. So with the instant death, you don't really miss out on that strength eight with your power fist. Your strength six, so monstrous mm-hmm. creatures are still kind of eyeing that warily. And you got the instant yeah. death, so you could probably you can kill monstrous creatures that would probably shrug off a power fist and just kill them outright. Yeah, I mean, this is great for demons. Uh, I mean, it's only AP3, so against, like, Terminators or, uh, you know, Artificer Armor, it's going to struggle a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but Mechanicum, you know, demons. But demons, man. I'm just thinking about my poor demon army with its, you know, pretty much universal five-up saves and multi-wound models. I've used it to pretty good effect on your demons last game. Yeah, they were not thrilled. <laughs> And now I can't rely on you just giving me three victory points at the end of the game. It's atrocious. Yep. Uh, yeah. Let's see. So, also, to, uh, since we already passed it, I'll say the Calibonite Warblade did not change either. It's a strength plus one AP3 melee. It's a power. It's a plus one power sword, guys. Yeah. Nothing. I'll take Nothing it. terrible about that. Nope. Yeah. Not the end of the world. So, yeah, that's the uh, blades. On to special issue ammunition. Stasis shells may be taken on models with the Lee Jonas Astartes Dark Angel Special Rule equipped with a grenade launcher, twin-linked grenade launchers, or missile launchers as an additional ammunition type for po- five points a model. And stasis shells in a grenade launcher, 12 inches, strength 3, assault 1, small blast, stasis anomaly. The missile is 24 inches, strength 4, th- uh, small blast, heavy 1, stasis anomaly. And stasis anomaly is awesome now it was good last time but now all models in a unit hit by one or more weapons with this special rule reduce their initiative to one until the end of the game game turn game turn excuse me <laughs> yes game turn not quite still that good. good but still um, good the previous rendition like i said i don't have it in front of me but uh you would reduce their initiative and weapon skill by one for the game turn or for the turn but now Initiative one. So bring those thunder hammers. Yeah, that's real rude. And have a good time. <laughs> For five points a model, definitely something you want to consider taking. Yeah. Especially if you really like the melee. Yeah, for sure. Going with the second uh, special issue ammunition. The molecular acid shells may be taken on models with Legion and Astartes Dark Angel special rule and dreadnoughts of any type in a Dark Angel's detachment. Equipped with heavy bolters or twin linked heavy bolters as an additional ammunition type for five points a model. Uh, the molecular acid cells, 36-inch range, strength 5, AP 4, Fleshbane, heavy 3. Yep. So a few things have changed. I think probably for the better because they were they were pretty ridiculous last uh, rendition. They were all over the place. They were. The AP was yeah. D6, and they never really figured out, do we roll each individually or just one die roll for all? I usually uh, ask my opponent to roll one die for all because it just sped the game up so much quicker. Uh, it used to be poison two up, and uh, they removed that, but they got flesh bane. Fl- uh, flesh bane. So effectively, hadn't yeah, like strength five with flesh bane is pretty much the same thing. Yeah, going about it a different way, but gets there in the end. Uh, the AP four is the big thing, though. Mm-hmm. You're not chewing through power armor half the time. No. You're wounding better, but the AP is not the same. Getting that lucky uh, 50-50 chance of just burning through power armor or that one in three chance of just burning through artificer or terminator armor was great. But, mm-hmm. but it still lets you mulch solar auxilia, which, let's face it, is what heavy bolters were born for to begin with. That's right. But, yeah, it's I, overall I think it was a nerf, but um, it was probably due for it. That AP yeah. D6 was kind of... It was ridiculous, especially when you get a 10-man squadron of heavy bolters. And it's like, oh, guess what? You're getting 36 AP1 shots. Poison two up. Good luck. Guess I'll fucking die. (laughs) But, yeah, so that's the uh, Dark Angels war gear. So that's a lot of fun. So then moving on, we're going into, if I can. Get into that hexagrammaton, maybe? Yeah. 
Good I can get there. There we go. Yep, so the hexagrammaton. Again, this is uh, the special rules that you can attach to independent and regular characters. Membership in one of the six wings of the hexagrammaton was a mark of skill and worth within the ranks of the Dark Angels. It was a rare sight to note one of the warlords without the insignia of one of these secretive organizations upon their battle plate. Any model of the character subtype, or with the independent character special rule, may take a single option from the following for 25 points. A given unit may include models from different scions of the hexagrammaton special rules, in which case that unit gains the benefit of each individual scions of the hexagrammaton rule present in its ranks. However, no unit gains a cumulative bonus for multiple models with the same scions of the hexagrammaton special rule, and no models may have more than one scions of the hexagrammaton special rule. So yeah, you can uh, combine with independent characters and to units with regular characters like sergeants and effectively get two of these rules bound together. Which is pretty interesting, but at 50 points, it's going to be kind of pricey. Yeah, that is that is a big ask. Yeah. But there is some super fun stuff in here. Yeah, why don't you lead us off? Yeah, so we start off with Scion of the Stormwing. Uh, which no longer exists in 40K, and therefore I have no knowledge of what it's about. Uh, a model with this special rule, and all the models in a unit with the Legion of Astartes Dark Angel special rule it is joined or is part of, makes snapshots at a ballistic skill of two. What the hell is the Stormwing? That doesn't really give it away for me. So the Stormwing, if you go uh, back into the book a little bit, they, it's effectively the core uh, infantry line of the Dark Angels. They're okay. the, uh, the okay. elites, the veterans. And just the veteran infantry. That's a, And that's a solid rule. Mm-hmm. Like and, uh, Snapshots at Ballistic Shield 2. Yeah, previous uh, hints of lore kind of made the Stormwing out as like the breacher squadrons for uh, ship-to-ship combat. But now in this book, it is uh, laid out as the core uh, veteran infantry. Mm. Uh, second up, solid. Yeah. Uh, second up is the Scion of the Deathwing. A model with this special rule may re-roll the first failed-to-hit roll of any phase while engaged in a challenge. Now, I will say with this, um, with the special rules that came out for Holguin and um, uh, Cedrus, no, not Cedrus, uh, the special rules that came out before the book came out for the two characters, um, Holguin it specifically mentions that he can re-roll that first failed hit roll in addition to his sword being mastercrafted. So this may, I don't know if they don't really specifically call it out in this book, but I wonder if that is also in addition to any mastercrafted weapons you may have. I mean, I'd allow it. Yeah. It kind of spells it out in the special PDF. Because mastercrafted is just, you re-roll a miss, right? Yeah. So, all right, I'll re-roll the second failed-to-hit roll. Prove that it's not. Yeah. Although that's interesting. It says, I may re-roll the first failed-to-hit roll of any phase while engaged in a challenge. Just in case you're shooting him. Well, in, while engaged in a challenge. So you're not going to shoot people I, in challenges. Yeah, I know. So. It's, it's weird. <laughs> so unless they mean, like, his phase or... Yeah, like your opponent's assault phase or whatever, just trying to make it... That might be the case. Again, it's still the, in challenge. So, I don't know. Just ro- just re-roll when you're challenging, guys. <laughs> yeah. And the Deathwing are still the first company, right? The the badasses in the Terminator plate. Uh, effectively, it's a little bit different in a 30K, but we'll get to that later with the units. All right. So, next up, Scion of the Dreadwing, uh, which I assume is the War Crimes Squad. An infantry model with this special rule and any infantry unit he joins with, same as before, may choose to move four inches through difficult terrain rather than rolling any dice and may re-roll failed dangerous terrain check. Okay. Tests. So yeah, it was the same as uh, Red Loss's rules on the PDF that came out. And I do really like that. Mm-hmm. Some, I mean, sometimes you're still going to need to roll those dice through difficult terrain because you're going to be needing that five or six. But how many times have you been like, ah, I got to go through that. And it, like, I, it's one inch deep. Like, 
don't don't make me roll two d six and get a fucking two. You know? Right. <laughs> it's great. And reroll failed dangerous terrain chests. I'm sure the uh, the biker squads are gonna love that. Yeah, a dread wing biker squad. That'd be pretty cool. Next up, we have Scion of the Iron Wing. When rolling on the vehicle damage table, a unit with the Legionus Astartes Dark Angel special rule that includes at least one model with this special rule counts all results of crew shaken as crew stunned instead. Now, when I uh, first read this, you ever get that time where you read something one time and then it's locked in your head that you know that's how it's read and then you just think about it? Yep, all the time. Yep. All the time. Well, for the past uh, few weeks, I've been looking at this rule and I was like, what the hell does this mean? It's base, It's extra armor. Why am I paying 25 points f- for a guy to get into a vehicle and give him extra armor? Because I read it completely backwards, like ass backwards. <laughs> so yeah, I originally thought this, okay, when I get hit by something and the vehicle damage table is rolled, all crew stun turns into crew shaken. <laughs> I don't know why I read it that way. I was like, but that's exactly what extra armor is. But uh, nope, when... You're in a vehicle, and you shoot someone and roll in a vehicle damage table. You're effectively never rolling less than a four. And you're all, yeah, so you're, ne- you're always going to uh, stun them, at least. Now, that being said, if they have extra armor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but do you have to roll for extra armor? I can't remember. Or is uh, it just a flat no, out? No, I think it's just, a, it's just a flat out treat X as Y. Yeah. Well, shoot for the stuff that doesn't have extra armor. You'll be fine. I think this would uh, overwrite that. You think so? Because you, you count all results as crew shaken, as crew stunned, and don't specific rules take uh, precedence over the more generic ones? So you would get I mean, crew stunned, or crew shaken. No. Crew stunned? That would go to crew shaken. No, no, cause stunned is the worst. Extra. It's crew it's shaken. Stunned is worse. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, so you'd have crew shaken, or you roll crew stunned, it goes down to crew shaken for extra armor, but that then becomes the result, so it goes back to crew stunned. Right? Eh? Eh? And I, uh, I don't know. It's the part that mentions when rolling on the, on the damage table, so I don't know if... <laughs> more clear. I think extra armor just says when rolling on the damage table, treat X as Y. Ah, now you're going to make me pull that out, too. Let's see. I am. Vehicles equipped with extra armor count crew stunned results from the vehicle damage table as crew shaken results instead. So I guess if you do so if you do roll a one, two, or three and shake them, it bypasses the extra armor. Suck it, extra armor. <laughs> I mean otherwise, what are you paying twenty five points? Exactly. For? Yeah. Screw yeah. No. You're gonna be stunned all the time. All right. I'll I'll back you on this. We'll, we'll roll a D six every time. Nope, we're just allowing it. <laughs> You play Jesse in my hearing. That's oh. what's happening. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? We got Scion of the Fire Wing. Mm-hmm. Oh, and the Iron Wing, for those of you that couldn't guess, I also know this one. Uh, it's the, the tank companies. Yes. <laughs> They're real fancy. Uh, it's one of the three that survives the Horus Heresy as a unique formation, um, but vanishes at some point before the, the current era of 40K. Yep. Then we have the Scion of the Fire Wing. Mm -hmm. Uh, The guy, the unit he's with, gain Hatred Characters special rule, which is deceptively good. If a unit has a character in it, hooray, your unit gets hatred against them. Uh, Do they? I thought it only specifically counts towards the actual model. Does it? I'm going to check. Then I've then I've been lied to on several occasions, but, you know, I've played one game this year, so what the hell do I know? <laughs> Let's see. A model striking a hated foe in close combat re-rolls all fail to hit rolls during the first round of each close combat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They really word it a little bit differently in, the, uh, in this case. Well, either way, it's not the end of the world. It's not a bad one. It's not my favorite, no. but it's not bad. No, it. My favorite is the Raven Wing one. Yeah, it's gonna be so. Signs of the Raven Wing. A model with this special rule, and any models in a unit with the Dark Angel special rule that it has joined or is part of, may re-roll any run, fall back, or thrust distances. Which is really interesting because thrust is for 
jetpacks. Right? <laughs> Nobody has jetpacks. We have jump packs, but not jetpacks. Yet. Future proofing. Right? You kind of get that feeling in a couple of places here, don't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd, I'd be straight up honest, and I'll probably just say this right now. Part of me does wonder if we're going to be seeing a Horse Heresy second edition here pretty soon after this. I mean, yeah, it's going to be in three months, Jesse, <laughs> just in time for you not to have played a single game with these rules in this edition. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, though I guess you do live with Caro, so like you've got no excuse. Oh, uh, yeah, I have no excuse, and we haven't played a single game since <laughs> things started. It's just one thing after another. I mean, yeah. Moving. No, I, I just, feel you. I feel yeah. you. And for some reason, I yep, have not played a game. We have no excuse. Uh, speaking of having no excuse, I do like the designer's note mm-hmm. uh, at the bottom of this. So you've got your six rules, and the designer's note uh, states that, hey, you know, these are fluffy. They're intended to reinforce how weird the Dark Angel's command structure is. Um, but this can, system can cause some confusion at the gaming table, especially in armies that choose to take advantage of the variety of options available. As such, it is intended that the wing or order allegiance be shown on a given model in the form of painted insignia or decal that clearly indicates which model will gain bonuses and which bonuses they will gain. The heraldry section included on page 109 is an excellent reference when considering what icons to include as part of your model's paint scheme, which means paint your models. Not only does it mean paint your models, but everybody that plays against Dark Angels, it's time for you to get uh, some IFF training. <laughs> Go memorize page 109. And when they try to dick you with a scion of the Raven Wing, be like, bro, that absolutely <laughs> looks like a Death Wing symbol on his shoulder pad. So <laughs> suck it. <laughs> this is not allowed. Yeah, totally I'm sorry, not sir. WYSIWYG, you have bro. incorrect insignia. Your, your painting is bad and you should feel bad. But with that being said, I'm thinking about in addition to my core army being uh, decaled up in the correct insignia that I want, if I want to expand around a little bit, I might uh, get some uh, laser cutout tokens with the different insignias so I can place mm-hmm. them next to them. Yeah, that would be solid. I think or so. Or give them all little back banners that are magnetized. That sounds like a lot of work. But it does. Actually, what, not, you, what else are you going to do? Right? You've just been working 12-hour days. you got plenty <laughs> of time. Banners would be cool. Oh, let's see. So moving on from that, we have the Hecastanica. Hecastanica? Yeah, I have no idea. All right, let's all have a, a phonetics lesson. Hecatonistica. Hecatonistica. They knew it. They knew Jesse's going to completely screw this up. Heketonyastika? Like, do you need a Russian accent? It really it? Sa- it really has that kind of feel to it. If anybody here speaks Greek or Russian, like, give it a go. Call in. Give it a go. 1929-HERESY-1. That's 1929-HERESY-1 is our voicemail box. They have bore a heavy burden of keeping the most secret and dangerous <laughs> knowledge acquired on the battlefield. Many of the Legion's most veteran warriors were initiates of the orders and wore their colors with pride on the field of battle. There you go. Just yep. went right into it. Yep. Before I just started getting really just like offensive, just, I'm just going to keep on moving. Before we all started losing our mind trying <laughs> to figure it out. Any, um, any model with the independent character special rule may take a single option from the following for 25 points. And this is also can be taken in addition to the hexagrammaton rules. Yeah, and these it's we've all wild. these we've read before. They're part of the uh, the Cenobites. If you've uh, know the rules of the Cenobites, which if you haven't, go back for a couple months. But we'll go through it again right now here anyway. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. There are seven different rules you can take, starting with augers of weakness. When making an armor penetration roll against a target with armor eleven or more face on the facing targeted. A model with this special rule may add plus one to the strength of the weapon used to make the attack. Which I mm. think is very, very solid. Mm. So good. Yeah, just there, there's nothing more to say about that. Like, that's just, that's flat good. Yep. I'd pay 25 points for that. Imagine any day of the week. Imagine putting a uh, 
combi melter on a Praetor. Suddenly you got a strength 10 gun. Yeah, right? That, that's amazing. On armor 11. <laughs> Which would be overkill for sure, but... But even like, you know, your guy rolling around with like a Paragon Blade or a Tyrannic Greatsword, mm-hmm. like suddenly he's strength like seven. reliably carving his way through most things that aren't Land Raiders, you know? Yeah. Giving Dreadnoughts a run for his, their money. Yeah, like Dreadnoughts are suddenly not like all conquering. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we got Icons of Resolve. This model gains plus one attacks on any turn in which it or a unit is part of uh, is charged by one or more enemy units. So effectively eh. a more uh, more effective counterattack. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's standard space wolf fuckery. So <laughs> like to me for 25 points, that doesn't seem that great. Um, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. That being said, this only affects the model that has the icon uh, that it's has true. It. so it, it doesn't uh it doesn't spread these are not force multipliers things. so uh next up we have uh, guardians of sanctity when making a deny the witch roll for a unit that includes this model roll an additional d6 and discard the lower result before determining if the roll succeeds or fails i love this on a librarian yes absolutely like Normal guy, eh, you, oh, great. I get to roll an extra D6 and hope it's a six. F it. But you get like a high a high power librarian running around and suddenly you're deny the witch is, you know, as easy as him casting it. Yeah. And what's the new uh, Demon Hunter console? I can't remember the name of. It's in book eight. Uh, a Mortifactor That's console. That's right, yeah. Oh, nope, nope, not the Mortifactor. That's the Dreadnought shenanigans oh. it sounded right <laughs> nullificator nullificator okay yeah does he have aether at- shock mall hexagrammatic wards adamantium will may become a psyker yeah what did the hexagrammatic uh hexagram uh, what did the wards do <laughs> hexagrammatic wards no idea oh it doesn't say on there uh, it has a little asterisk and and then just moves right on no um so when targeted by attacks by demons, uh, they re-roll in vol saves. Oh, just demons. Okay, not just psychers. Yeah. Okay. Or if you want to be a traitor, well, I guess, you, know, you don't have to be a traitor, but you can be an esoterist uh, and take a single lever of psychic mastery and can take up to a single further level. So you can be a level two psyker and run around uh, with psych out grenades for lulls and an archaeotech pistol. And the guardian of sanctity. <laughs> yeah, I got these. So there are some fun, some fun ones that a guardian of sanctity be useful for. Yeah. Uh, then we have Slayer of Kings. This model may reroll failed hits of one when engaged in combat or in a challenge with any model with a weapon skill of five or higher. It's all failed to hit rolls. Pretty much. I, I don't know. I, I think I like Hunter of Beasts better, but if you're not playing, like if you're playing a straight Marine list, then Slayer of Kings might be the way to go. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Hunters of Beasts. Uh, this model may reroll failed to wound rolls of one when engaged in combat with any model of toughness of five or any failed to wound roll if the toughness is six or higher. That is really good. And and that I like, especially when you're flailing around with a tyrannic greatsword. Like suddenly, a tyrannic greatsword against a thing that's T seven or eight, like isn't that you know isn't a handicap really? Yeah. Because you're rerolling to wound anyway. Just fuck him right on up. Then Reaper of Hosts and Reaper of Hosts is why I don't really like Icons of Resolve, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, because it says, this model gains plus one attack in any fight subphase, which they begin in base contact with more than one enemy model. I feel like that's going to happen more often than a turn which you have been charged. It depends. It depends if you're trying to take challenges or not. Although, I guess in this edition they don't like specifically have to move away from the rest of the battle and it is when they begin 
the fight sub phase. Mm. So you charge in. We have to we'd have to look and see where exactly declare challenges falls. It's before the it's, fight begins, I think. It's bef- before the fight sub phase. Which I guess makes sense. It is Reaper of Hosts, not killer of that one dude that eyeballed me wrong. <laughs> Um, but I, I still like it. Uh, yep. Maybe it's just that I play so many horde armies. Mm. I have a natural <laughs> reflex to want to kill as many things as possible. It's true. And like I said, mention again, this is not for the entire unit. It's just for an individual character. Yep, just that one guy. Only independent characters. So. So I guess Guardian of Sanctity is the one like buff, like unit buff, right? Yeah. Yeah, because it definitely affects the whole unit because when you're stuck with a unit. For a unit, psychics, it includes yeah. this model. Yep. Then finally, we have Breakers of Witches, which is pretty good too. This model may reroll all to hit and to wound rolls in close combat when attacking an enemy unit affected by a blessing psychic power or an enemy unit with either the Psyker or Brotherhood of Psykers slash Sorcerers, Psychic Pilot, Demon, or Demon of the Runestorm Special Rules. So let the thousand <laughs> suns and the demons start crying because all to hit into wound rolls in close combat. Oh, yeah, it's demons too. Uh-huh. That's sad. I was laughing because you say psychers and I just automatically think thousand suns and fuck those guys. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's rude to demons too. Mm-hmm. And you don't need to re-roll all hits and wounds against demons with those goddamn tyrannic great swords. <laughs> they didn't this do nothing. rude. Shit. <laughs> but again... <laughs> Each of these is 25 points. That seems- it is expensive. But you can f- for you can- 25 points, if I was playing a demon army, I'd take Breaker of Witches. Yeah. On top of, say, like you're bringing a Paragon Blade or a Tranic Great Sword. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he'll earn those points back. Yeah, it stacks up quick, but... It does. So yeah, guys, these are the uh, effectively the universal rules for the Dark Angels. And we're at a good stopping point for an hour because i got to admit, I still haven't quite escaped my wonderful work schedule. So I'll be getting up nice and bright and early tomorrow. But I <laughs> I felt like I've been uh, neglecting you guys, and I apologize for that. So I wanted to get this out as uh, soon as possible. But uh, thank you all for listening to this episode of the Remembrancers Retreat. If you like our podcast, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter at our R30K podcast. You can find us at Instagram at Remembrancers underscore retreat. If you really enjoy our podcast and would like to support us financially, you can go over to patreon.com forward slash RR30K podcast. And as always, I'd like to thank all of our patrons. With their generous support, we keep the show running, starting with our prayer to tier, Alex Self, Chris Mack, Jacob Dillon, Garner.Tree of Woe, Joe from Music City Heresy, Matthew Boyce, Mr. Baldwick, and Nicholas Quenga. Our Legion Centurion tier, we have Andrew N., Angry Boy, John Christensen, M. Tanzer, Queen Corswain, Scott LeMay, The Original Applesauce, and Black Label Painting. And finally, our Sergeant tier, we have Aaron Maynard, Duncan, Emily O'Hare, Garrett Lowe, Nicholas Gillen. Thank you all very much. And we got some lost transmission magnets and stickers, which I will be sending to you all here very shortly. I'm really excited. Dude, those look so good. It's wild. (laughs) Yeah, I'm really happy how they turned out. And uh, yeah, if you like the uh, Horus Heresy and you like Battlefleet Gothic, go on over to our website, rr30k.com, where we have the Battlefleet Heresy Compendium which uh, Austin, you and Steven have worked tirelessly on and probably more stuff down in the road in the future. But in the meantime... Oh, yeah, we've, we've got big plans. Big plans. Big plan. But in the meantime, we if you like... We call them great. <laughs> but uh, if you are interested, you can go over and listen to our spinoff podcast, Lost Transmissions, on this same feed, where uh, Austin and Steven basically do a uh, creator's commentary on the different legions and rules that uh, they developed for the Horus Heresy. Be sure to also check out the Heresy Grad School guys also on the feed. They're working on Nostrama. I don't know if they're done yet or not. I've been busy, boy. Uh, But they're getting close. Yeah, they... they, I think they'll be finished by the time this goes out. I feel like they only have one left. Maybe. 
Eh, there's one either way by the time you're <laughs> listening to this, dear listener. Yeah. Or, you know, if it's 2023 and you've just rediscovered uh, the internet. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome back. It's been, and, uh, it's been a hell of a it's year. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely done. Definitely. Uh, if you want to check out uh, Caro's Heresy Book Club, uh, she's been working behind the scenes to get some more episodes recorded on that. And they should be releasing here next few weeks. Very excited. And uh, that's all I have tonight. Austin, I don't know if you got anything you want to talk about. Nah, man. <laughs> I'm good. All right. It's been been nice podcasting with you again, Jesse. It's we been good. It's you. been weeks. So it's been good to get back in the saddle and get back to all this funness because, boy, this book nine, even though it is the smallest of the series which makes me a little bit sad. There's a lot of stuff to cover for the Dark Angels. So so this part one, and we'll be coming into part two next time. <laughs> I'm not going to say next week, but next time we'll do the units of the Dark Angels. Yeah. So until then, you all stay safe, and we'll keep those dice rolling here in the near future. Take it easy. <laughs>